Yep. All right, this short video is just to explain how you use force summation to generate maximum force. So we know that force summation says that for maximum force to be produced onto a projectile, ball or a body, you must use um, all your largest body segments through to your smallest body segments, but in a time and sequence way. So you can see that, say, for the dodgeball throw, this as an example, you start off using your legs by finding your legs, which are your larger body segments, through to your middle body segments, which is your trunk, right through to your smaller body segments, shoulder, elbow, hand. We'll just zero in on the legs, trunk and shoulder, because that's all I've got room for. But I'm going to zero in on why timing and sequencing is so important. So when you produce force, okay, obviously it will start in the large body segments, and it starts from nothing. So it starts down here, and what you do is the muscles work, and they produce like a graph like this. So they reach maximum force, and then it drops away. So that starts here, building the force up until you get maximum force. And for example, on the dodgeball throw, that would be from here to here. So when you really got all of these major muscles, quadriceps, quadriceps, hamstrings, gastrocnemius, all turned on. The timing and sequencing is really important because the next segment of your body must start working at a perfect time, otherwise you end up with less force produced, and I'll show you how. So the next body segment must start at the peak of production of the segment before it, so that it goes like so, okay? So you can see that it's produced that amount of force. So now we're looking at this amount of force, as opposed to if it was just legs alone. So that's summing up the forces. The next body segment, which is shoulder, must start right at the peak of the trunk. Okay? So once again, you've now got this amount of force produced by adding the three body segments up, but in a time and sequence way. So when the throw is uncoordinated, like in the left hand, you might find that the legs and the trunk, or the trunk is moving a bit too early or a bit too late. If it's moving a bit too late, as an example, what happens if it starts moving here, you might get the same amount of force produced by the trunk, but you only end up with that amount of force. Okay? And then if the shoulder moves too late, you might once again end up using the same amount of force for the shoulder, but when you add them all up, you've got less force overall. So that's why moving your large body segments through your smaller body segments to generate force in a time and sequence way is really important. The only other thing is for an excellent civil answer you need to talk about interrelationship. So down here, if your legs are got a good base of support, then you are going to increase stability, therefore equals increased force. Okay? At this end here, you've got Newton's second law. Because an object will travel or accelerate in proportion to the amount of force you put on it. So in a dodgeball throw, for example, you want the ball to accelerate as fast as possible. So you want as much force as possible. So this ball here will accelerate more compared to this one, which will accelerate less. So in your answer, if you can connect those three together, that's showing me interrelationship and heading towards an excellent level answer. This public announcement is brought to you by Mr. Gibbons.